All right, looks like it's uh, time to get started. So again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, today's program uh, is Aging Actively at Riverwoods Exeter. Uh, and I'll be introducing our speaker, our fitness manager, Melanie Riley, in just a moment. So again, uh, thank you all for joining. We probably will have additional people joining as we're getting started here. Um, for today's program, just a couple housekeeping notes that we like to pass along to all the audience members today, that everyone will be on mute, uh, so no one has to worry about uh, having their voice recorded, except for Melanie and myself. Uh, we do really enjoy uh, questions. Again, um, save your questions for the very end, because some of the questions will probably be answered by Melanie as she goes through her slides today. But for all questions, please submit them through the Q&A box that is at the bottom of your screen, since this is a Zoom presentation. If you are on uh, an iPhone or Galaxy phone, uh, Android phone, it might be in a different location, but there's a Q&A box to submit all questions, and we will get to those at the end of the program today. We also uh, are really uh, always captivated by our audience. If you have any suggestions for improvement or a future topic that you might find uh, really great for all of our future residents and prospects of the community, uh, please feel free to share those. You can put them in the Q&A box or send them directly to Riverwoods to the marketing department as we really do really appreciate your suggestions and questions. Today, our feature presenter uh, is Melanie Riley. Melanie has been part of the Riverwoods family here in Exeter since 2019, so a few years, uh, which is great. She came to us as a fitness contractor, an outside contractor doing services for the community, and then shortly after was promoted to a fitness associate, and then now is our fitness manager for the Riverwoods Exeter community. Uh, she'll share a little more details on her background as we go along. Uh, she certainly has a love of Riverwoods and our residents and has grown to serve our community that she works in so well. Uh, and she's very passionate, and you'll find that out, about engaging our residents with new fitness programming, which she will be talking about today. So uh, get excited about the program she's about to present. We do have uh, uh, different people on this call today. So we do have some future residents, people that are on our wait list waiting to enter the community, and then some prospects or people that have general interest in the community. So we'd like starting out just a little background of what a CCRC is, or we call continuing care retirement community that Riverwoods Exeter is. So we are basically an insurance product. We are regulated by the state of New Hampshire Department of Insurance, where residents would move in, live independently, live their best life, uh, participating in fitness programs, which we'll talk about. And then as your needs change, we have access to all forms of health care from assisted living, memory support, and nursing needs here in the community. We have an entrance fee, which is highly refundable here in the community, and then a very predictable monthly service fee that includes all the parts of independent living from dining, uh, no home maintenance, no snow shoveling, which we might have to attempt this coming weekend, uh, transportation, activities, programs, and of course, fitness here in the community. We also like to talk a little bit about Riverwoods, where we are today. So Riverwoods is a family of communities. Uh, here at Riverwoods Exeter, we are part of uh, three communities, Riverwoods Exeter, Riverwoods Manchester, and Riverwoods Durham. We are governed by a CCRC board or Continuing Care Retirement Board, which is focused on daily operations and part of the Riverwoods group, again, with our family of communities, Riverwoods Exeter, Manchester, Durham, which all have their own financial model. And then we have shared fee-based services for the Riverwoods group that provides assistance to our communities from finance, marketing, human resources, uh, quality control and information technology. So it saves each community money having the Riverwoods Group created. And then the Riverwoods Group also funds at-risk proportions or projects that the communities seek for new ventures. And then again, each community is financially independent of each other. And then we have a system board that looks on kind of growing our future mission, which is serving more people of the greater community. So now I am going to turn it over to our host, uh, Melanie Riley, our fitness manager here at Riverwoods Exeter to take you through our program. Remember to use that Q&A box for questions, which we'll get to uh, later on. So Melanie, it's all yours. All right, thank you, Dan. Um, I'm really excited that you're all joining us today and that I can talk to you about our ever evolving fitness program here at Riverwoods Exeter. So to start out, I just wanted to ask a question. Have you thought about the difference between health span and lifespan. 
So just think for a second, what does is, what is health span think to you uh, or mean to you when you think about that? All right, so next slide, we'll talk about what those actually are. So health span is the duration of life spent in good health without chronic disease or age-related disorders. It supports the maintenance of both health and functional capacity, the avail ability to perform activities of daily living. So extending our residents' health spans at Riverwoods Exeter is really what we're about. We're helping you spend more years doing what you love. So especially once we get to the Q&A later, I, I'm looking forward to hearing what you love doing. Um, but for now, just kind of think about that. What do you love to do? All right, next. All right, so our mission statement here at Riverwoods Exeter is to empower our community to pursue optimal wellness by providing safe and exceptional programming, education, and experiences that enhance the many dimensions of wellness. So on this next slide, we'll take a look at the dimensions of wellness. So my team would primarily focus on the physical dimension, but we're very aware of and incorporating all of these other dimensions. And we will get to some of these as we go, as you see the different programs and workshops that we offer, how we incorporate not just the physical dimension, but the social, spiritual, avocational or vocational emotional, environmental, and the cognitive and intellectual dimensions. And that's from the uh, International Council on, on Active Aging. So we've adopted their dimensions of wellness. Moving on. All right, so how about active aging? What does that term mean to you? Think about that for a second, and then we'll take a look at a couple different definitions. First definition from the World Health Organization, active aging includes a wide range of pursuits that keep your mind, body, emotions, and spirit engaged. So all of those dimensions of wellness, again, not just the physical. And then also from International Council of Active Aging, from Colin Miller, no matter where you live or what your specific lifestyle and health situation is, anyone can be an active ager and squeeze the juice out of life. Do you love that? So you can live better and longer in that circumstance. So that's really what the heart of what we do is we just come alongside you wherever you are at here in your journey at Riverwoods Exeter and try to help you live your best life um, in terms of fitness and wellness. All right, so kind of starting on more of the, the fit side of the continuum of physical function, we have some of our sports fitness classes here. So as you think about what you love to do, maybe some of you love to golf. We have a lot of golfers here. So we do have indoor golf fitness classes. Sometimes we take our classes outside, as you see up here. We also do trips to um, a golf course. So um, our strength and conditioning coach here, Steve, we're very lucky to have him. He has a background in strength and conditioning. He's worked with professional athletes in various sports, baseball, as well as golf, um, football. He's also worked with Olympic athletes. So we are super excited to and grateful to have him on board. He's come up with a lot of this programming that we have. So he'll come out to the golf range for the, the driving range uh, event that we have and just really cr help critique your swing after you've been working on it inside and all of the other aspects that go into being a great golfer. Um, down here, this is our ski fitness class. So we started that one. We ran it last winter as well, and uh, residents have really enjoyed having that going into the ski season. We're still continuing that as people are very much still in the ski season. So working on skills and, you know, muscle strength that we need for skiing. So really helping you do what you love to do. Coming in January, we're doing a pickleball fitness workshop. So some of the common injuries that can happen in pickleball, uh, educating people and um, helping work around those so that people don't get injuries and can really enjoy that sport. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So fitness classes, other fitness classes that we offer. So strength and balance is kind of our bread and butter. Um, it incorporates strength and balance. 
We'll talk about it a little bit more later, how it incorporates so much more than just strength and balance, but strength and balance is a name that people recognize. So that would be um, our core class here. We also recently added a strength and balance for osteoporosis class. So that came out of a master class, something that people were asking about, people who've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, really wanted some more guidance about, you know, what's safe for me? Uh, what can I do? What should I, should, should I be doing? What should I not be doing? So that has been a great uh, addition to our monthly schedule. We have a boxing circuit class. So that's a little bit more of a boot camp, high level, high level class where people want to be challenged in different ways. Um, that's ever evolving. Um, we like to get new equipment, try new things. So people love that for a, a unique challenge throughout the week. Fit 30 would be a 30 minute class that we have that supports people from a little bit more, not completely seated, but it supports people to sit a little bit more and it's a little bit shorter. So that's a great class for people who feel like strength and balance is a little bit too much for them, which is a 45 minute class. Or if they're coming back from an injury, that's another great way we can support people. We have aqua fitness classes. That's another one of our bread and butter core classes that we offer at all three campuses three times a week. Uh, this picture here to the right, I wanted you to see one of our beautiful pools. You see another one um, behind Dan there. We have three pool, you know, one pool at each place. This is actually an aqua volleyball tournament going on um, where I took the picture. So our pools get used for our classes, swimming on your own, as well as uh, aqua volleyball. So this is just, just a picture of one of our beautiful pools. They would all have the ability for lap swimming as well as strength training. Uh, flexibility work. Uh, we also have yoga classes, Pilates, line dancing. Coming new this month will be ballroom dancing. We showcased that um, earlier this week um, with some mini classes that we did. We like to kick off the new year with shorter classes, kind of showcasing our specialty classes and it encourages people to try something new. Everybody's trying something new and it's a shorter class. So we showcased that this week and it went over really well. So we're excited to put that on our weekly schedule starting next week. Uh, Zumba Gold is a class that we've had on the schedule for a long time that a lot of people love. It's a fun way to exercise. Neurofit class, this class caters to but is not exclusively for people with neurological disorders such as Parkinson's. So although we work on strength and balance, it might work on some of the challenges that are unique to people with neurological conditions. Um, we do boxing in that class. Boxing has been proven to help with tremors. Um, so that's, it's a fun class. Core and stretch, just like it sounds. Golf fitness, ski fitness, we already touched on. We also have tai, a great Tai Chi provider that comes in and does classes every week. And then I touched on master classes a little bit as well. So master classes are a chance for us to do sort of a pop-up class, kind of, it either might be because we can't put something on the schedule, we can't find a place for it. So we might just do a pop-up here and there, or we might be trying to gauge interest for something. So those are a lot of fun. We try to have a master class most months. So I guess that's it for, for classes for now. Melanie, a quick uh, question. Uh, yes. If a resident lives at one campus or another, can they participate in classes at any of the three campuses? That is a great question. We'll go over that a little bit more later, but um, yes and no. All right. And if I forget it later, but I don't think I will. Okay. Um, I'll show you when I show you our sample schedule. I'll, when I show you what that looks like, it'll be clear which ones we would and wouldn't travel for. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's see, other classes, pickleball fitness I mentioned. Uh, we also just started a yoga therapy class. So that's new yoga that would be more um, specific for brain health is this particular series that we're running. Started this week, ballroom dancing coming this week. Um, starting to work on a movement with thought class. So although we incorporate intellectual cognitive work into our regular classes, this one would be more specific to really working on cognition. So that's another thing we're working on. 
um, ideas, TRX cycling, we're always open to ideas that you have. So we just kind of file all those away and see if and when we can put any of those into action. This is a fun class here, these two sisters. This is a strength and balance class, but um, I just wanted you to see another one of our fitness classrooms. All right, adventure trips. So we love to get outside, um, incorporate that environmental dimension. It's so good for your brain to get outside. It's good for you mentally to get outside. So we get outside whenever we can. Um, you've probably seen that we have a beautiful trail system here at Riverwoods Exeter. Uh, across all three campuses. So when it's nice out, our team loves to help lead some guided walks out there. We were also able to do a snowshoeing uh, trip last year, barely. It snowed later that day, the snow was gone, but we got it in. We have a couple more scheduled this year. And this is right up at our Gooch Park. So right on campus, we have this lovely park where that we can use for all kinds of things. You'll see it again later without snow. Um, so our trail system connects to the Scooch Park and we're able to do some snowshoeing up there. Other things we do on campus, the bike rides, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then we try to get offsite as well, indoor this time of year, we're going bowling. Uh, up here we have paddle boarding. We did our first paddle boarding trip this year and that went really well. Anyone who wanted to get up on their board was empowered to get up on their board with our expert instruction from Seven Rivers Paddling. So that was, that was a new fun thing we did this year. And then our kayaking below, we've had a partnership with Seven Rivers Paddling for several years. Um, and usually we run trips from June through September, so four trips a year. We bring the people, they bring the kayaks, they take us on a lovely guided tour. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully having cross-country skiing later this month. Um, <laughs> same same provider, the Seven Rivers Paddling turns their ski uh, are into a ski shop into the winter. So we're hoping we get some snow and Again, we can bring the residents, they'll bring the equipment and we'll go for a lovely cross country ski excursion. So that's just a little bit, it's about some of the things we do offsite. And more off, more offsite and onsite. Okay, so just expanding, we have that partnership with Seven Rivers Paddling. The last couple of years, we've been developing this relationship with Northeast Passage. So Northeast Passage is a nonprofit organization funded primarily by UNH, whose mission is to empower everybody of every ability to enjoy sports and recreation that they would like to. So it's it's been awesome to partner with them and include more people in these activities, both on-site and off-site. So you see here on the top left, um, they bring adaptive equipment so that we can help people get into the kayaks that aren't sure they can get into a kayak anymore or don't feel confident walking down that big steep ramp. We can bring a transfer bench, some wheels, transfer them somewhere that they feel comfortable and wheel them down. This happens to be a tandem kayak too, so a staff member went to help with the paddling as well. And then down below, both Seven Rivers and Northeast Passage came and did a kayak clinic for us. Uh, some of the residents had requested a clinic learning how to get in and out of a kayak from land. So both of those companies came, did that demonstration. People found it very helpful. People felt empowered to come on our trips. They also became more aware of all the extensive equipment that Northeast Passage has to make it accessible for anyone and everyone. Up on the top right, we have done some biking uh, within the campus, uh, both on regular bikes. We have bike share bikes here that people can use. We've also had Northeast Passage come here with these recumbent bikes. And this year we took those recumbent bikes off campus. So we drove over to a place on the rail trail. We brought the people, they brought the equipment. Everybody could pick a recumbent bike that felt comfortable for them. Some of those had an e-assist and we went for a nice ride from Epping up to Newmarket and back. So that was a lot of fun. We'll definitely um, continue to grow that partnership. 
um, archery here. They've done archery on campus for us several times. Again, up at Gooch Park. This is Gooch Park without snow. It makes a great place to set up to do some archery. And again, they make it accessible for everyone. They have different equipment and adaptations so that everybody can participate in the sport. They've also been here to do adaptive pickleball with us. So we're excited about continuing to expand that partnership, uh, including archery offsite. So we're gonna be going somewhere next month to do some indoor archery with them during the winter. So lots going on there. Very excited about that partnership. Okay, workshops. So every month we try to run one workshop and one master class or either or. So these are the pop-up classes. A lot of times it's things residents are asking for. So up here on the top left, uh, we did an osteoporosis and exercise workshop. People had had a lot of questions, really wanted to make sure they were being safe, exercising safely, um, and knowing exactly what they should and shouldn't be doing. So we did a workshop which led into adding that class to our weekly schedule. It was so beneficial. We did a swimming workshop. So we have an instructor on staff right now who's a lifeguard swim instructor. And so he's in here in the pool helping people work on their strokes. We have a lot of lap swimmers here. Uh, that's another workshop. Some of these workshops are one time. A lot of them will repeat because they're very popular and helpful. So as new residents come in, we keep running these workshops again. We've got fall in love with the floor this year. People expressed an interest in wanting to have more confidence going down to and coming up from the floor in a safe way. So that was a fun workshop. I'm sure we'll do it again. Very beneficial. We're definitely seeing our residents coming down and up from the floor with more ease after that workshop. Pull power. I'll talk about a little bit more about this later, but that's another one we run twice a year. We teach people how to use walking poles. Walking poles can be used for stability, especially out on our trails. They can be used on even in the hallways here to help support your walking, or you can also use them to take your fitness to another level and use them for fitness walking. So that's a workshop we run twice a year. And then down here, we had an attitude of gratitude workshop. So as I mentioned, my team really tries to expand, although we primarily focus on the physical dimension, try to branch out into those other dimensions of wellness and support residents in all aspects of wellness. Master classes, we've done a bar workshop, intro to intervals, talking about why we might do interval training in our classes. I'm sure we'll run that one again. That was most fun. Pickleball fitness. We're running that next week. And again, it if it if there's enough demand, maybe it's something we put on our schedule. So this is a great way for us to see if something is what residents are looking for and if it's going to be helpful and something we should add on a more regular basis. Also in end of January, we have an aqua boot camp class. So it's gonna be a little higher intensity aqua class, a little bit shorter and a little bit more cardio focused. So that'll be fun. Look forward to seeing what residents think of that. Okay, so this is our strength and balance mosaic model. This is adopted from the Functional Aging Institute. It kind of gives you a visual of all the aspects of physical function outside of just strength and balance. All of these are aspects that we are working into our classes um, over time. We can't get to all of them in every class, but definitely incorporating that cognitive and emotional component, agility, flexibility, um, what else? Yeah, cardio for sure. Yeah, all these different components. Residents say that they never take the same class twice. And, and that's true. We're always changing our classes. Some might have a focus more on one thing and sprinkle in some of these other aspects than another. But we're always taking a look at this and making sure we're working in all aspects of physical function over time into our strength and balance classes. Okay, and I won't forget the question. So this is our group fitness schedule. This is the ridge. 
for example. So every day you see, every week you see on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we have those core classes, the strength and balance and the aqua. For those particular classes, we, we do ask that you go at your own campus so that we can kind of have predictable numbers. Some of them are large classes and knowing who is going to be coming to a given class in general is very helpful for us. And it's helpful for you. You don't wanna travel across campuses and have a class be full. So those classes always would give precedence to residents at that campus. Any specialty class, which is almost anything besides strength and balance and aqua, you would be free to travel for and we would encourage you to travel for. So on this ridge schedule, for example, if you see BLD or WDS after the name of a class, it means it's at that location, the woods or the boulders. If it doesn't have anything after it, it would mean it's at your campus. Hopefully that answers your question. And then um, on the bottom here is all of the special events that we are running on a given month. So although the general schedule stays the same with some you know, small ads and, and deletes each month, our special events are here on the bottom. And we've been going bowling monthly during the winter months. We have line dancing every Saturday or every other Saturday, twice a month. So that's a lot of fun. That pickleball master class and our aqua boot camp are our master classes for this month. We have the indoor archery coming up, cross country skiing. And then down here on the bottom, I mentioned that we had a mini class schedule. So a lot of times at the beginning of a year, we like to run those shorter classes and encourage people to try something new kind of showcase more of our specialty classes. So that's a lot of fun. Please put in the Q&A if there's any other questions about the schedule and traveling between campuses that I didn't get to. So as I mentioned, each, each campus does have a fitness classroom. Each campus does have a pool. Additionally, we also have fitness videos that we've recorded. We started these in 2020, but have been expanding it ever since. These videos, some of them play on the Riverwoods TV every day. So every Wednesday at 10 o'clock, you could expect to have a strength and balance class, for example, and that would be something predictable. So some people like to work out in their room, in their apartment, and we like to support that. So we're always kind of trying to keep that fresh both on Riverwoods TV as well as the portal. So Riverwoods TV would have certain videos where the portal would have our entire library of videos. So just yesterday we recorded. They couldn't make it to Pilates class or were traveling. They asked if we could put one of those on the portal that they could do on their own. So we have a very extensive library of videos that you can do on your own, as well as joining us in the classrooms. And this is our current team. We tend to have about six employees, give or take. We are able to use contractors as well. So sometimes we have more employees, less contractors or vice versa. But right now this is our team of six. I like to give this sheet to all new residents when I meet with them. So that's one of the fun parts. My One of my favorite parts of my job is meeting each of you when you move in here. We like to give you a few weeks to get settled in and then I will reach out and set up a time to get to know you. So hear about your health history, what you love to do, what you've loved to do in the past, what your goals are at Riverwoods and just kind of orient you with our team and our schedule. So know that we will sit down with you personally when you get here, um, but I like to give people this so that when they walk into a classroom or if they're in the gym and they have a question about a machine that they could approach any of these people and, and have them help. We also do personal training. We have 30 and 50 minute sessions. These are for people who have something really specific they wanna work on that they don't feel like is being addressed adequately in a strength and balance class. They need a little extra support or wanna work on something very specific. So this is a very robust 
program that all of our associates are part of. We also have small group training. So if you have a friend or a spouse that has a similar goal and fitness level to you, maybe both of you want to work on balance or both of you want to work more specifically on your skiing strength. Um, we have small group training. So that makes it a little bit more fun to do it with somebody else and a little bit more cost effective. We also offer one-on-one -on -one yoga or Pilates training. Okay, club sports. So these are these are primarily things that are run by residents. We support these in two ways. If if pickleball, for example, needs more pickleballs, we can help get them updated equipment. They also ran a round robin last year, a, a, a fun big event, so we can help get the tables and the chairs and, and things that they need to run those events. And then when new residents come in and say, I really would like to get involved with the pickleball group or the hiking group, we know who those resident contacts are so we can help get you plugged into those resident run groups um, as well. Ooh, active aging week. Okay, these are fun. So a chance to see our classroom again. I'm, I highlighted, highlighted the, a classroom in our ski fitness slide as well. But um, active aging week, we really, we really hit all of those dimensions of wellness intentionally. So where we typically focus on the physical, we make sure that we are exposing people to all dimensions of wellness during active aging week. That is always the first week in October. So it's really busy and a lot of fun. Uh, we did, um, in conjunction with our line dancing, we did a social to try and get more people to try line dancing and to socialize afterwards. We also, you see a few pictures here up at Gooch Park. We always like to do a field day up there. We had Northeast Passage come and do the archery. We had our team put together, make your own trail mix. So teaching people uh, within the physical dimension about ways that they can support their body nutritionally, why they want might, might want to include certain ingredients in their trail mix, what those ingredients do for your body. So that was a lot of fun, obviously incorporating that social dimension as well as the environmental and the physical dimensions all together. We also have one or two speakers come in. So that's a fun week where we really get to hit all the dimensions of wellness within our fitness team. Okay, bike share bikes. So those are away for the winter, but we do have three bikes available at each campus for you to use. These bikes can be ridden around campus or wherever you would like to go from campus. So that's a lot of fun. We have ping pong and billiards. Up here, you see me at our par course. We put this in in 2020 to give more people options to for physical activity outdoors. It's always good to get outdoors. Anything you can do outdoors, do outdoors. So we have a sit-up bench. We have some parallel bars that are great for working on balance. They can be used for different strength activities. Um, you see me here working on large steps, so keeping big movements. You could be doing these walking, hopping. We have a handout we've made of all the different ways you can get creative working out outside. You also see a couple ladies here with the poles. Uh, mentioned that pole power class that we do, teaching people how to walk with poles to either support their walking or take their walking to the next level. Uh, challenges, we love to do challenges. This one here, we just finished a walking challenge. So this is the second year in a row we've done a walking challenge kind of at the end of the summer going into the early fall. Um, so it was a lot of fun, both residents and staff participated. We had a wrap up party in the end with medals and prizes. Um, I mentioned snowshoes, snowshoeing. We also have snowshoes for loans. So if we do get some snow this Sunday, people might be banging on our door to borrow some of those snowshoes and get outside and enjoy it. 
Um, other challenges that we do, we're currently working on a wellness bingo. So the other thing we like to do at the beginning of the year is encourage people to try new healthy things and develop new healthy habits, maybe try new classes. So we have a wellness bingo going on where you can pick up a bingo sheet and try new things, develop new habits, things like unplugging, meditating, stretching, having lunch with a friend, just all kinds of, of fun ways to embrace wellness in the new year. Uh, yeah, so there's just some of the challenges yeah. that we run. Okay. You did a Have great job. Man. Thank you yeah. so much for all the great information. And I know we've had a few questions start coming in, but if uh, people on the call think of some questions, uh, certainly we have uh, time to answer a lot of questions. Um, and I think she put out a question early on on one of the first few slides that she might want some input on again, and we can bring that back up. Uh, but we do have a few questions we can start with if you want to do that, if that sounds okay. So the first question, uh, well, someone asked me while you were talking of what the pool is behind me, and this is the boulders pool. Um, so that was a question yeah. that came up. So good question. Good eyesight for whoever was uh, caught that behind me here. Um, the next question, you mentioned many, many classes, but are they all included in the fee or cost or are they extra charges? So yes, all of the classes, master classes, workshops are included in your fees. The only thing that would be extra would be the personal training, the small group training. Um, and then once in a while we'll run some kind of a specialty session with a, a specialty person that would be extra. But most of what I've talked about today, except for that slide about the personal training in a small group is all included in your fees. We're really trying to provide as much as we can for for your service fees. Excellent. Uh, and including is, also, you know, I showed you the um, ski fitness and golf fitness, but my team also works over in the lodges and we're also expanding that offering over in the lodges. So really, um, you know, we want you to see our faces and we want to be there for you wherever you are at here at Riverwoods. Great. That is a common question people ask of what is included uh, in that monthly service fee. So great question. Um, there is another question. Uh, you talked a little bit about skiing, cross-country skiing. Uh, do you have anything for alpine skiers? Yes. So the ski fitness class is to keep those alpine skiers um, in good shape for, for skiing on their own. We've tried to run a skiing um, trip before. We haven't had enough interest to do so, but we could certainly try it again. Perfect. Um, next question uh, is from Grace. Uh, what type of yoga classes do you offer? Oh, that's a good question. So we <laughs> recently had our yoga instructor leave. We've hired two new yoga instructors and really they, they're coming in and they're listening to residents about what residents want. So it's kind of a work in progress, um, maybe a strength and balanced sort of based yoga. People tend to want to feel like they've gotten a good workout in addition to getting a good stretch. Perfect. Uh, next question. Um, I think you answered this. Is there additional cost for personal training or what is kind of the average cost if you don't mind sharing? It's 38 for a 30 minute session, which is what most people do either once or twice a week. Okay. Perfect. Um, I figured this question might be coming up because we talked about pickleball. So this is a tennis question. Um, is there a resident tennis group in our, is there a tennis club or courts nearby or where do most residents go to play tennis? I am aware of residents who do play tennis. Um, and I, I would refer you to one of them for where, where they do it. I'm not sure that they have a resident run club here, but I'm definitely aware of people who do play tennis locally on a regular basis. I am, I am a tennis player. So, uh, for oh. indoor clubs, <laughs> so I can answer the question a little bit to help you out. Uh, there is a couple private clubs, Seacoast, and then there's also Great Bay, uh, athletic club that's over in uh, new market. So some clubs that are nearby for any of those people like indoor year round tennis. And of course there's a lot of outdoor courts, uh, in and around Exeter high school actually has quite a few outdoor courts as well. So, so they are available. 
Um, oh, question from Karen. What are the lodges? Uh, that's really our healthcare areas of, so assisted living or memory support. Uh, I know you use the term lodge, which is the right term, but uh, it's our healthcare air area. So thank you for that question. Um, is there a charge for the loan of snowshoes or golfs or kayak excursions? Oh, that's a great question. So the snowshoe, so the different um, snowshoes are something we purchased that you can use at, for no extra charge. The golf and kayaking excursions, we charge what the companies charge us. So we're just passing along the charge, whatever that might be. Okay. Yeah, a lot of questions on charges, but I guess that's why we're doing the, the information today. Yeah, no, um, great questions. Yeah, paddleboard is another one. Is there a charge for paddleboard usage? So I guess that yep. falls so, that. so those trips, um, the Seven Rivers brings the equipment and the instruction and we pay them and we've been working with them for a long time. So they really do a great job giving us great pricing and great service. Perfect. Um, I know this is a question I get. It's not a question that someone asked, but I'm gonna, I have a few questions for you too. Um, requirements on using the pool. Uh, do you have to have any safety courses or requirements to use any of the pools here at Riverlands? As far as I'm aware, I think wellness does some kind of a check-in with everybody when you come in similar to fitness. So that would get covered under wellness mm -hmm. as opposed to fitness, but they're going to meet with you uh, shortly after your arrival here as well to go over things like that. Perfect. Um, question from Carol, uh, where do most residents play golf? And um, uh, there is a resident golf group. I know there's a number of residents that play golf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would direct you to one of them or Steve. Steve would know. <laughs> See our our staff member who's the avid golfer. Yeah, uh, Carol, I am a golfer as well, so I can uh, tell you, uh, Exeter uh, Country Club is a public course. It's a nine hole course, so that's very close by. And then there are additional courses all around the seacoast area, all the way to Portsmouth, Greenland, Hampton, uh, the Dover area. So there's some really good golf courses, some easy ones, and some very challenging ones, <laughs> based upon your level uh, in that particular case. Uh, question from Linda, does a hiking group hike only locally or do they travel to further uh, locations? That's a great question. I believe both our hiking group and our walking group, they travel, but there's a limit to how far they travel. So I believe there are some, some limits there, but yes, they travel a little bit. Okay. Do you know some of the locations okay. they've been by chance? I'm not sure for some know. like the Ogunquit, the Marginal Way, for hiking, um, Job Mountain. So probably less than an hour, but you know, not necessarily super local off the top of my head. Uh, another question is, uh, what is the average attendance at a lot of the classes that you hold? Are there some classes that are more popular than others in that particular case? Yeah, I would say the strength and balance classes are the most well attended. Those are our core classes. So for the most part, those classes are fairly full. We never want them to be completely full. If they start to get too full, then we put more classes on the uh, schedule so that we have some overflow. I would say those are the most popular, but it, it really varies. We The golf fitness is very well attended. We have a core group um, there. Pilates, yoga is growing with our new instructors. So I think it's great because you can find what's where, where are the right places for you. So when I sit down and meet with you and I hear about what you like to do and how you like to move your body, I can help direct you to the classes that you're probably going to enjoy the most. We do have some people who come in and try everything, which is phenomenal. And then they figure out that way where they want to settle. It's also a great way to meet other residents, especially for new residents mm -hmm. moving in. It's a great activity. Social great dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, question, uh, really good question, uh, Louise, is do you need to pre-register for classes? Currently, no. We are not doing pre-registration. 
we do have sort of a roster so we know who might be coming to any given class. And we do have maximum capacity numbers for those classes. So some of them that are kind of full or people have a certain place they like to sit, they will come early, but there is no pre-registration necessary for those classes. We For workshops um, and master classes, because we really do limit those new numbers, we do have a registration for those and a pre-registration so that we make sure we have the right amount of materials for a workshop and the right amount of space. Perfect. I think we're winding down the questions here. Make sure I don't miss any here. Do you also, I know, I don't know, maybe you did mention about bocce ball or horseshoes, those types of things that happen here at the campus. Right, yeah, those are resident run activities as well. So another great opportunity to get outdoors, to meet other people. Sometimes I pop into those events um, and they're having a lot of fun outdoors doing those. We have horseshoes um, both up at Gooch Park, primarily at the woods is where the big group meets. Bocce, they have at the woods a couple times a week. And then we just got a court up at the Ridge. So I know that that group is growing. It's a great, great. way to be social. Uh, question on the hours of the pool. Is there any restrictions on times you can use the pool? For the most part, no. Um, although they're technically open all of the time, it would be a little bit awkward if you were trying to lap swim while we're holding a class. So um, it's technically open during class, but most people choose to do the swimming on their own either before or after our fitness classes, which are really only one hour a day on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We also do have like a small cleaning window where we really try to give the housekeeping a chance to give it a deep clean once a day. Perfect. But other than that, they, they're they open as early as you want to come in the morning, as late as you want to use them at night. And uh, just so people know, if you're not familiar with Riverwoods, we also have uh, locker room areas for residents to use. Most people come from their home or apartment, but there are uh, locker rooms here at each campus uh, in the uh, fitness areas as well. Um, it looks like we're winding down for questions uh, here. You've you've answered so much in a in a good amount of time here. <laughs> Um, and really, we always, um, you know, if you think of questions outside of the call today, certainly reach out to your senior living counselor. Uh, something we can answer, certainly we'll reach out to Melanie and her team. If you come for a tour, you can see all the wonderful fitness areas in person. You might see a class going on. Uh, you'll see the pools, all the equipment. Um, so it's, it's always best to see it in person because you really get a better sense of everything going on. But as Melanie said today, we really offer a lot of opportunities for residents uh, based upon what your abilities or what your interests may be. Um, so, so thank you all. I also want to point out we do have one additional program upcoming. If I can get to that slide here. Um, our next online workshop, we always like to tell people about our next events when we have a captive audience, is scheduled for Wednesday, January 24th. So this is for anyone from a prospect to um, a resident might be on our wait list. Uh, it's scheduled for Wednesday, the 24th at one o'clock in the afternoon. This is um, how to live a tapas life. Uh, really navigating that transition to retirement. So tapas meaning smaller, smaller plate if you're thinking food wise, but uh, really living a reduced or a more um, uh, a transition to retirement age. Uh, a life here at Riverwoods. It's hosted by Andrew Robin. He's an expert in this field, so he'll share his expertise. It's a one-hour program, so if you are interested, uh, if you're fast, you can scan the little scan me sign here, or you can go onto our new website. Uh, if you're not familiar, Riverwoods um, uh, has a new website called riverwoodsnh.org, and then you can go into any of our three communities, Exeter, Manchester, or Durham from that location. So riverwoodsnh.org uh, and go to Riverwoods Exeter. This is a all encompass um, program for any of our communities. So Wednesday, January 24th, hope you can join us. So I think we're through most of our questions. Again, I wanna thank Melanie for her expertise today and sharing uh, what a active lifestyle and fitness looks like here at Riverwoods Exeter. And if anyone wants to learn more about Riverwoods Exeter, again, please reach out to your senior living counselor or our Riverwoods marketing office. 
uh, thank you again. Have a wonderful day. And uh, maybe we'll see some snow this weekend. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.